Alex Flores and today we have a fantastic guest in Las Perlas. Her name is Corlin Pendetlon Jimenez. She is actually one of my favorite dykes around Toronto and she is also a screenwriter of the award-winning film Tomboy and author of the children's book Are You a Boy or a Girl? and she teaches in the School of Education at Trent University she was raised in Los Angeles, having lived in Berkeley and San Diego. Now she lives here in Toronto. And she actually is coming to present us her book, How to Get a Girl Pregnant. Wow, that is a fantastic title. So for all of us who has uh, stereotypes, the butch girls don't get pregnant, hey, let me tell you, you're gonna break them right now, right here, because she's coming to talk about her adventures disappointed and also to invite you to her book launch how to get a girl pregnant stay with us because we're gonna have a really fun conversation with her Everybody, we are back here with Corlin. This is Corlin. She just came out with a book, How to Get a Girl Pregnant. Hello, Corlin. How are you? Pretty good, Alex. I'm so excited about this book. Tell us what is the inspiration. I, I mean, I know, but... What is the inspiration? Well, uh, I was trying to get pregnant, and uh, it seemed like uh, the whole process was very odd and lonely. And, um, uh, and it was something that I wanted more than anything in the world. And when you really want something, um, I don't know, it's very intense, right? So those are all reasons to write, uh, reasons to connect with other people, and reasons to share uh, what's really meaningful to you in the world. Well, I've been reading your book about uh, this whole process that you have. Um, something that touched me the most is the, when we ask to our, our friends, right? That we have, we think that they're gonna help us to this process, yeah. and it's like, no, no. Well, uh, uh, the most the one that impacted yeah. me was your friendship with Mateo. Mateo, yeah. Um, it was very hard to ask people that I cared about for sperm because I was afraid that, well, they would think that I was my friendship was more about the sperm than them or um, that they would get funny you know it's almost like asking someone for sex and having them turn you down only more so <laughs> so yeah so you know how if you ask somebody and they turn you down and things get weird and I was worried about that because these were people I really cared about and and loved and um, uh, and then uh, it was also hard because I was you know wasn't necessarily secure in you know, not looking like the kind of traditional or ideal mother. You know, I didn't know if I like, being butch would they would want like a nice motherly looking mother and not a butch thing. I don't know. Uh, so it brought out all of my insecurities as well. And um, you know, but you got to do it right if you really want that baby. You have to put yourself out there. It's all risk. Um, it's risk to make life. So. I love the part that you say um, when I went to to El Convento Rico <laughs> and I scanned the whole situation about who is the looking guy, who will be the lucky one to us, and then you started to stereo at some girls, and then you say, okay, start with the girls. I need to find some guys. So tell us about that experience of visiting nightclubs or visiting... Um, well, um, I, I started doing that because um, I thought... Well, the friends kind of turned me down for the sperm, and then I go to the fertility clinic, not to ruin the whole book for you or anything. <laughs> I go to the fertility clinic, and that's not really working out, and I, I just, and I also didn't feel like I had control over it. I felt like everybody else had control over my body, and I didn't, and uh, I guess because I've always been, not always, but often been successful. <laughs> picking up women in bars. <laughs> but I thought, okay, well, you know, uh, maybe I should try to pick up guys. And uh, <laughs> and uh, a lot of people told me, uh, you know, that guys are pretty much up for sex. Um, they don't want to have babies, but 
to, you know, as long as you don't tell them you're doing that. Right. But it was really scary because um, I didn't want to get hurt. Right. I didn't want to get any disease. I didn't want to get raped. I didn't, you know, there was that part too. Um, I, I mean, the comical side of it, I guess it, it's kind of funny because I just haven't picked up guys in 20 years. So I just had no idea what really to do. <laughs> well, it actually looks like uh, insane because you're such a butch girl. I have to say, she's she's like so butch, like she with these boots and motorcycle boots and you know leather jackets. And then suddenly I see her one day with a tummy, and I'm like, oh, hmm. <laughs> with the baby, <laughs> with the tummy, oh, with the tummy, with the tummy. Yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, but the whole thing about the process to to tell us like how to get pregnant is a big deal because yeah. we pass all these turn downs and yeah and yeah you you know um there's both sides i mean you're being rejected by them but then there's the other side where you're rejecting them and you don't even realize like what's important to you until you're there i mean there's one scene in the bar where there's a guy next to me with a really really huge nose <laughs> well i never really thought about whether noses were important to me it hasn't been like oh you know people with nose you know i never really thought about it but then i was like well, if I pick up this guy in this bar, then he's not going to know about the kid. He's not going to be the dad. And then I might have this kid with this really big nose, which is okay. <laughs> but then there's no, you know, genetic material. You can't bond with his dad with the nose. I, you know, and I was just, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, is that an issue? And um, those are issues that are even different in a bar than when you're reading the sperm bank registry because they don't, they don't give you that information. Right. Do you know? And, or, you know, whether somebody's... Uh, no, it just seems odd or you know none of that necessarily comes up in this so sperm bank thing so all of a sudden you put on all these new restrictions well not that guy because of, you know, yeah, of course. Oh, and, 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 and which guy do you think you're able to get you know like <laughs> thinking about the body that you're in will they be okay with the which thing but I mean I don't know the straight woman would tell me that ultimately guys like to have sex so Right. And, and tell mm. me one thing, it was important for you to have a known donor or it didn't matter at the time? Whatever it is, I just want to have a baby. Right. Um, uh, those things changed as the process went. I mean, at the beginning, what I thought was really valuable was that it was a Latino guy and that was the most important thing. And then I tried and tried and tried and tried. And then at some point, that didn't work out. And right. so I needed to let that go, right? And so the same thing with the known donor. I thought that was the most important thing. And then at some point, it didn't work out. And so I said, okay, um, is it going to be a known donor or no, or no baby? Do you know? Right. And so I went and I thought, okay, um, I, I'm not going to not have a baby. That's not going to be the breaking point for me. So then I, you know, went through the whole fertility system to try mm -hmm. to do that, you know. And then, it, um, and then out of the other end of that, right. So that all of a sudden that possibility came back. But not because I planned it and not because it was the only way I was going to do it. It was just that uh, it was a value I had at the beginning that, that you know, the universe... Mm -hmm. conspired to get me at the end so but I think people and I talk about this in the book have very good reasons for either wanting a known donor or an unknown donor and I think you just got to go with what that is and or what the universe offers you in the end right right so yeah many many of us pass mm -hmm. a lot of experiences in that direction right yeah and uh, for so couples it's important to have a known donor for the kid to have a father, yeah. right? And then, but for other couples, kind of uh, have fears for all the stories that we that we know in the past for the, for having the known donor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, for sure, um, you know, human relationships can be very messy, mm -hmm. and you know, even with the best circumstances, you can get into conflict. Um, so that's the downside. Um, and that's that's re very real and very legitimate as far as I'm concerned. Whatever women are deciding, you know, and and the pro is that if uh, it is a good experience, then your kid has another parent, 
around and um, you know for us so far that's that's been really good you know mm -hmm. so and the other thing is is you know even if the parent isn't so good even if the parents mediocre at least the kid is not judging you against some fantasy parent right because you can never win against a fantasy parent so that's another pro I think that even if the person's mediocre they ha they're not gonna you know they're right. not gonna um, judge you against some fantasy right so well uh, Colleen tell us what is going to be this uh, fantastic book launch and, oh yeah uh, okay the time the space the everything so the book launch is going to be uh, this Thursday November 17th at Slacks on Church Street it's just north of Wellesley can't remember the address right now it's at six o'clock there's two other books being launched with it um, but have no fear if you if you can't come to that one I'm gonna have a couple more events um, uh, the parenting network wants to do something the women's bookstore wants to do something and another story so I, I want to have a few either you know kind of question and answer or mm -hmm. what have you and the books out it's in all the book cities it'll be in the women's bookstore and another story and chapters indigo you can pre-order it's on Amazon whatever you want to do it's out there I hope you enjoy it um, I, I really recommend the book I've been reading the book and it's absolutely touching for all those dykes who wants to be mothers and all of those bushes <laughs> who thinks that they cannot because we're gonna look kind of like a out of a bush studies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really recommend it. It's a fantastic book. It is touching. It is uh, comical <laughs> because you have a lot of really nice stuff that it <laughs> made you smile and you can identify with that. And uh, it is great. I mean, thank Thanks you for so making such a good piece of, uh, of our lives, of what we're passing through to be a mother's. I appreciate that. I'm glad you like the book. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Anyways, well, uh, check this uh, book launch by Carlene, and uh, right here is all the information for you to go and check it out. See you next time, and thank you for coming, Carlene.